Last year, my team and I visited the Icon shipyard in the Netherlands to show you how this supply and rescue vessel was going to be transformed into this luxury explorer yacht. We looked at the changes that we made to the appearance of the vessel and at the totally new power and propulsion system that would be installed. Today, we return to this busy shipyard to see what progress has been made since our last visit. We walk through the deck plan of the yacht and ask the questions, why has the entire vessel been sprayed with water? And what am I doing up here? Well, the first very visible change that we saw when we arrived in the shipyard was that the entire stern section of the vessel has been cut off and removed. That was done so that the hull can be lengthened and the transom can be used as a beach club. The Icon were telling me they also took the opportunity to change the shape of the bottom of the hull in that area to prevent slapping. Now, if you've ever been on the beach club on a luxury yacht, you'll know that when the ocean moves, as it does, waves can sometimes slap against the bottom of the hull. Now, that's fine if you're on a rescue and supply vessel, you're probably just happy to be rescued. But if you're on charter on a luxury yacht, you really want to enjoy peaceful relaxation. Also being able to redesign that aft section of the bottom of the hull made it easier to fit those Voith Schneider propellers that we spoke about in the last video. And the second very visible change can be seen above me. The entire vessel has now been painted with primer. Now, whilst this work in itself wasn't particularly time consuming, the preparation that went into it was fascinating. Before taking on a donor vessel for a project such as this, Icon embark upon a feasibility study. And in the feasibility study of this ship, it was discovered that the original green paint underneath a top coat of red paint was of a type that contained an element called chromium-6. Now, in its powder form, this can be highly toxic, so if the shipyard were to sandblast this off, the result would be that clouds of toxic dust would be created. However, the addition of water causes a chemical reaction that detoxifies the chromium-6, so to be extra safe, Icon elected not only to use water jets to remove the paint, but to have the water jets operated by robots. The water jets brought the ship back to its state of exposed steel, giving the shipyard an opportunity to make a detailed analysis of the steel itself, which was found to still be in perfect condition. No issues at all with regards to the thickness of the hull. Wanting it to stay that way, a protective primer coat was immediately added. Whilst here, on the bow, a three square meter patch was painted with a show coat so that the owner could see what their chosen colour would look like when applied. Meanwhile, the huge job of stripping the interior is well underway. Now, I know how much viewers enjoy seeing the deck plans of a yacht, so I'm going to use the deck plans to show you around. But I can't show you around all of the yachts, simply because a lot of it hasn't been built yet. So this area is simply not visible as is true of this area and this area, leaving us with this. And we'll start at the top of the boat, in the bridge. Currently a vast, empty area, ready for the addition of the helm station, a digital chart table, a day head, an admiral's table so that guests can enjoy breakfast on the bridge with the captain if they wish, and an aft-facing seating area to enjoy what I can imagine will be stunning views. 
And talking of views, I have to say that the visibility up here on the bridge is second to none. To my knowledge, there's only one other super yacht in the world that has 360 degree views from the bridge. But before we take a look aft, I just want to point this out to you. The new general arrangement drawing shows the bow will actually be built up a lot higher than it currently is. But look a little closer and you will see this odd profile shape sticking out here. What could that be? It's this. This is a wave breaker so that if that supply and rescue vessel ever got into those awful ocean conditions that you see sometimes on Instagram with waves crashing over the foredeck as a final protection to the helm station, this would take some of the energy out of those waves. So this will be moved further forward since that bow area now will be a lot higher. So the trajectory of the waves in any case would be different. It's highly unlikely that this will ever be used, especially not with paying charter guests on board. However, both the shipyard and the designer believed it was very important to stay true to the original DNA of this rugged, go anywhere explorer vessel. Which leads me back to the aft section of the bridge. Now remember that in the finished yacht, the helicopter landing pad will be at about the same height. So this windowed area will give the crew member whose job it is to guide the chopper down, both protection from the elements and clear visibility to do so. Moving down from the bridge, we find a double bottom to the deck, allowing access to the electronics of the navigational equipment for maintenance purposes. Further down still, and we come to the owner's deck. Now the forward part of the deck is dedicated to crew quarters. Here, the footprint of the cabins is plain to see and will remain unaltered in the finished yachts. As you can imagine, the old steel pans for the bathroom floors will be removed and replaced, as will the piping although the penetrations will remain so that new piping can easily be fitted. Further down still, and we come to the upper deck and an area that I can call the crew habitation area. This aft section is dedicated to storage and we'll come back to that in a moment. Moving forward, we have a large crew mess and rather unusually a crew recreation area as well so that if some of the crew are eating and watching the football in the mess, Others can hang out and play with an Xbox, for example, without disturbing anybody else. And then on the starboard side, we have a large galley. Now, at the time of filming, it was pretty dark in here, but the final plans provide for extra windows so that the chef can work in a more pleasing ambience. Forward still at the galley, and this huge area will effectively be one very large refrigerator with separate freezers inside. Something I was very impressed with here was the thought given to economy of movement. Here, a small removable crane can be installed. Actually, there'll be fittings in various locations allowing for supplies to be taken on board. A door will be added here so that crew can easily take the supplies and put them in the stores. But the same goes for the other way around, of course. If, for example, the crew need to set up for a beach barbecue, it will be easy to disembark tables, chairs, and all of the other equipment through this route. And that leads us to the next deck down, which has been named the wellness deck. At the moment, this is a large open space since the shipyard has worked hard to empty the area but eventually it shall be divided up into a beauty salon, a sauna, steam room and spa, a massage room, a treatment area and a yoga area in a gymnasium. Want to know what this will look like? Well, it will look something like this. The owner of the yacht was keen to work with an experienced designer who still does his drawings by hand. This amazing book is full not just of his sketches but also of drawings of the interior with details and, and measurements. The paper sketches are sent by courier to the shipyard where the head of interior at the shipyard worked with the designer to convert the sketches into working drawings 
and the working drawings into detailed renderings that really show what the yacht will look like when it's finished. A great example of that is with the master stateroom, an area of the yacht that's not been built yet, but eventually will be converted from this glorious sketch to this magnificent area, complete with a study and immense dressing room and his and hers bathrooms. Of course, this is relatively easy to do on paper, but to transfer ideas from a piece of paper or a PDF file to an actual cabin, you really need to have accurate measurements. When new parts of the structure are concerned, they will of course be made to measure, but for the existing vessel, a 3D scanner was brought in. This machine shoots millions of beams of light into every area of the yacht that eventually creates what's called a point cloud that in turn gives this remarkable three-dimensional image of the yacht with totally faultless accuracy of details and measurements. By working in three dimensions rather than the traditional two, designers can factor in every aspect of the yacht when designing, whether piping at a higher level may be in the way of fitting a cabinet, where wire runs are, everything you could possibly need to know to ensure that the millions of components of the yacht will fit into place perfectly, the first time. And that brings us to an area that's absolutely critical to get right in the design phase. As we move down through the yacht further, through the main deck crew quarters, to a deck that the shipyard called the tween deck and more crew cabins, and finally to the tank deck, where the beating heart of the yacht is located. You recall that in the last visit to the shipyard, I walked you all the way through this area of the vessel and explained how the propulsion system will work. But just by way of a quick recap, we have a vast two-story engine room where five generators will be located. Moving aft, we walk through an area that will be dedicated to an engineer's office. And then this corridor will have huge battery bank rooms on either side. Now this corridor had not been built during the last visit, so it's interesting to peek behind one of the bulkheads to get an idea of the large amount of space available for those batteries. A little further still and we find the pump room and then these stairs lead back up to the tween deck again where this area will be used for storage of water toys. Now in the last video I mentioned that bulkheads on either side of this area will be removed to give more width and more space and this work has already started revealing a huge amount of space that is now available. This does raise the question though, what were the bulkheads for in the first place? Well, these were the fuel tanks for the ship. So the new yachts will have less fuel capacity than the original donor vessel. But if that concerns you, consider that with that diesel electric system, with those Schneider props, the new yacht will have a range of 20,000 nautical miles at 10 knots. That should be enough for just about anybody, I would think. But these are not the only tanks to have been repurposed through here there's another enormous tank. This area was originally a massive freshwater tank used to supply fresh water to oil rigs. Now no longer needed, it's being converted along with much of this area for storage. It's a great place for the crew of 19 to keep their bikes, for example, skateboards, camping equipment and hiking equipment. There is never enough storage space on a yacht and can you just imagine what you would like to take with you if you were spending months on board exploring the world one area here particularly stood out to me though and it was here a dedicated area for a science lab i was speaking at a conference earlier this year that was encouraging the industry to face up to the challenges of sustainability in yachting and i got talking to a scientist who has dedicated his professional life to researching the oceans with a view to understanding what we're doing to them or what we need to do to preserve them. Pretty important work. He told me that his travel budget for the year was $2,500.
2,500 for a year. I can spend that sometimes in a day filming yachts. So something that yacht owners can do, especially yacht owners of vessels that will be traveling to remote parts of the globe, something they can do is to have scientists on board to carry out that vital research. They don't even need particularly a lot of space to be able to do it. So Icon and the owner of this yacht have not just embraced that idea, they've done something practical to make sure that it happens. But it doesn't end there. Every effort has been made to ensure that there is no wastage on this project. There is no large skip outside the shipyard where old parts are cast aside. Everything that can be saved is saved, reconditioned, repurposed, reused from the huge cranes that were fitted to the aft deck to small fittings that will not have a place on the new yacht. Even the glorious old anchors are going to be refurbished, polished up and used again on the yacht. Icon themselves for some time have committed to using only green energy in their shipyard. Most forms of transport, automobiles and aircraft, ships and super yachts struggle with sustainable solutions. But at Icon, they're not just talking the talk, they are truly walking the walk in their efforts to reduce the carbon footprint of the yachts. In future videos, we hope to return to show the yacht as it grows and takes shape. The work of the engineers and the designers who combine their energies and their efforts to make this a truly unique and exceptional yacht that in itself is given a cleaner, healthier, more efficient life repurposed to explore the globe.